Hello and good morning. And good morning, good evening. In fact, you know, we all are coming from different time zones. So wherever you are, I hope you all had a great day. And today, once again, after almost two weeks back, we are back with another wonderful uh, webinar with another wonderful photographer, uh, Suhas, a great friend as well. And when it comes to Suhas, you know, there are certain pictures which click into your head either a, a frog otherwise more often the snake which i'm really scared of and homeland western guards so suhas is going to share some experience of from his beautiful career and some amazing images plus the stories and how can you prepare yourself for a expedition in western guards and how can you use your images on conservation background as well so let's welcome Suhas and let him share his journey with us. <clears throat> Hello. Hi, Nisha. Hi. Uh, thank you, you so much for uh, doing good. Yeah, uh, in the guards presently. Uh, That's came here great. Shoot and uh, yeah, enjoying every bit of it. Uh, maybe you can kind of hear some frogs croaking here and there. <laughs> Um, kind of yes <laughs> yeah a little bit yeah as i i mean i had planned to you know uh, have the session from the field but the rains are very uneven you know so it is raining sometimes so i thought you know let me be safe and you know uh, sit here at the in my homestay where i stay so yeah thank you so much for having me uh it'll be my you know my great pleasure to uh, take you through my journey uh, whatever small bit i'm doing here with the snakes and frogs especially uh yeah we can begin i'm all set now that's great so i'm just going to add the presentation part as well if you can make sure. the screen as full screen that will be great yes okay uh... so yeah so hi everyone uh Again, uh, it's been it's been a good uh, it's been a great pleasure to uh, be here, uh, and many thanks to Nisha, uh, Hermes, and uh, Sneha, uh, who are good friends of mine, and uh, we've been knowing each other. We know each other from a long time uh, through photography, and yeah. uh, of course, uh, photography has helped me to again meet a lot of people, a lot of like-minded people, and um, yeah, of course, it's, it's going to be a good uh, you no know, memory going forward as well. <laughs> so uh, now I'll take you through. Uh, my journey so far with uh, photography. I am a self-taught photographer and uh, uh, doing all, all I can in terms of, uh, you know, uh, shooting snakes and frogs because this has been my passion and I'm living it. Uh, I started off initially uh, uh, with a small Nikon uh, uh, Coolpix camera, a small, maybe a, it's smaller than a mobile phone what we have now. And uh, that is how it all started. And uh, I uh, come from a place which is in the foothills of Western Ghats. Uh, it's Shikaripur near Shumoga district, which is close to Agumbe okay. in the Western Ghats. So uh, a lot of snakes and a lot of frogs used to come into my house. And especially frogs used to enter uh, my kitchen. And my mom used to call me to, you know, uh, <laughs> catch them and, you know, put it out. Because she was very paranoid of uh, frogs, of course, uh, a typical uh, woman. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, not being biased. <laughs> and um, that is how it all started. And um, once, you know, there was a snake which entered my house and uh, I, uh, dad asked me to go get the snake charmer because every Saturday fair, snake charmers used to come and have a show, get a lot of snakes mm -hmm. and, you know, they used to show the snakes and get money. So one community used to live near to my house and I went and got that guy. Uh, to that person, uh, he came and caught the snake. It was a cobra and okay. he killed it. Oh. Which was very sad and very heartbreaking, and uh, that had stayed, stayed in my you know mind and heart for a long time. And after one year, I went to Mysore to my grandmother's house for the for the holidays. That is where I saw Snake Sham. I'm, I'm sure most of you guys might have heard about Snake Sham and or even met him. So uh, he caught the snake, and uh, the something called as rescue. That was the first ever time I saw it, probably 25 years back, and. Uh, I could compare. I could compare the snake charmer who knew how to catch a snake, was not scared of snake, but yet caught it and killed it. And there was another person here, snake charm, who is trying, you know, trying hard to save the snakes, which you know, which which a lot of got a lot of fear in the people's mind, and you know, all those things. So that is where I could compare. And I took snake charm's side. You know, I thought I'll start saving snakes, and but I didn't know how to do it because I was very scared of snakes. 
I was literally, you know, uh, so scared of snakes that if somebody used to call snake, uh, the Lord was just gonna run away. Maybe a little more scared than you, Nisha. <laughs> so later, I started reading about them. When I saw saw snake sham, I started reading about them. Uh, that point of time, it was twenty five to forty rupees per one hour internet. Okay. And uh, all my pocket money was just you no know, never crossed ten uh, rupees per day, <laughs> and used to save up all the money and you know go and. Log into Sifi, Satyamsifi dot com, and spend half an hour logging in and half an hour researching and come back. So that's how it all started. And met a few people through uh, the snake uh, rescue part in Mysore. Uh-huh. And then I always, uh, you know, liked photography. I started to take photos with my dad's Yashika film camera long back then. Mm-hmm. Out of thirty six films, maybe some two or three used to look like photos, and the rest were to be black. So, <laughs> <laughs> and then later. i strongly believe that only through photography uh, you can actually get snakes close to people yeah uh, there is no way you can you know take somebody to to the snakes or take snakes to somebody and show them that this is a snake you know this is what it does and you got to save them they are very important in our ecology etc etc yeah. so photography is something which i believe that can do some magic which actually it did <clears throat> and i met a lot of people uh, i would like to quote few people uh, vivek philip uh, who uh is kind of my uh, you know guru when he uh, he was he used, he used to be in mysore and uh, he his hometown was kerala okay. so he used to take me to kerala he used to roam around in uh, manandwadi uh, kannur and boystown and all those places in the ghats mm-hmm. and we used to get to get very close to frogs and snakes and observe them take photographs that's how it all started okay and um, and yeah in 2011 i got some awards and recognitions from national geographic Oh, right. I will show the photographs uh, later. Uh, so that that gave a real boost. And any which ways, I was never interested in doing this nine to uh, five job. You no, know, go to office every day. That too in Bangalore, and I don't think I have to even talk about it right now <laughs> because everybody uh, know know they know what it is, what it takes yeah. to you know go to office and come back home. So my passion always lied, you know, uh, lied with uh, wildlife and western guards, forests, streams. You know, just taking a walk in the meadows and. hills and trekking and all those things so after the uh, recognition i received from uh, natgeo uh, i i was recognized by a lot of people mm-hmm. and uh, people started asking me a lot of questions about snakes and then i felt okay whatever i was doing i felt i was going in the right direction yes, and uh, again there was nobody to guide me there was nobody to guide me with regards to the photography field in which i was doing and i didn't even know that there could be a career in that okay. and uh, that that continued continued for a couple of years start doing camps start taking people because i felt i was very lucky to uh, be associated with the western guards because my hometown is just 80 kilometers from the guards um and not many people have this privilege to you know come to the guards and see the western guards either maybe during monsoons or summer and winter because western guards will be in a very different shape and different color in all different seasons so i uh, along with few of my friends and colleagues long back then uh, i used to still work as an hr professional profession mm-hmm. professional and uh, yeah i could join the, those people and they they joined me and we used to come to the guards and you know search go walk in the fields stay stay in the uh, forest for you know morning till evening and sometimes go in the night so that is how it was you know it is all uh, starting to shape up in a very different way and okay. start doing camps for people from bangalore <clears throat> because the more it people used to get frustrated from the job what they were doing the more i used to get uh, clients <laughs> so <laughs> that that is the you know, key because of course they need somebody to take them to a place which is not known by them yeah. which they have never been to yeah. and uh, they wanted somebody to guide them into the western guards and maybe give them a place and make them stay in a proper place in a in the western guard region and give them some nice local food and also along with this of course you no know, getting them you know to the forest taking them to the forest and showing them snakes frogs give them that wonderful experience of what a forest looks like what a rainforest looks like how yeah. is western guards and how do snakes live where do they live what do they do and when do they get active and all those things so uh, i definitely don't have any kind of regrets in the journey what i've uh, had so far from the from the very day i touched the camera or the first snake <laughs> when i did uh, back in 2009 or 10 Yeah. So, yeah, it's going good. So I'll quickly, you know, uh, take you through the photographs which I've taken. Also, uh, try to tell you the stories which uh, are behind every photograph. Not every photograph uh, right here, but 
some yeah. interesting ones. Yeah. So yes, Western Ghats. Western yeah. Ghats for a lot of people um, mean a lot of things, but for me, Western Ghats uh, it means life. Uh, it it means me. So mm-hmm. I, I see myself there in the Ghats whenever I see uh, these wonderful lush green mountains, you know, and uh, rivers, valleys, and yeah, every every bit of it. I just got totally into my life, and you know, it's got totally into my veins, and I live it. I live it every day. So this is one of the photos which I took in uh, Kudremukh National Park, maybe some ten years back. It it needed a small trek for about one and a half kilometers uh, to the peak, and the yellow light what you see on the mountains is the first rays of the sun which falls here. So we had to be there on time. Yeah. So tired because the inclination was almost like 70, 75 degrees, and we had to climb there. Oh. Uh, and once we reached here, once we saw this site, absolutely the tire- tiredness was gone. So <laughs> that's how magical these mountains are. <clears throat> so it, it it has life in every bit what you know, we see. Wow. So this was the photograph which uh, I took in 2011 along mm-hmm. with uh, two of my friends. It was shot in Chikmangalore. So it is probably difficult to tell how big this snake was. This was not even... Uh, longer than uh, six, seven centimeters, a very oh. tiny one. Okay. And uh, haven't used any <clears throat> hi-fi lenses or no tripod and no flashes, nothing at all. It was just shot with a D7000 body with an 1855 lens. Oh, great. <laughs> so uh, this is something which, which you know, uh, gave a kind of rebirth uh, and gave a lot of hopes and, you know, made me feel that yes there is something which you know, which has to be you know done yeah. so this photo actually made me a little uh, famous and you know it, it got spread within a night because it was uh, on news everywhere on the internet in mm-hmm. 2011 and one of my managers called Karthik Ramachandran who was my manager in Infosys Yahoo he mm-hmm. uh, called me messaged me and told me hey Suhas you're on that geo I said really <laughs> <laughs> that's how it started <laughs> so Everything what we see in the Western Ghats is uh, worth a picture. So this is, you know, it, it's all about how you look at it. It's all about mm-hmm. how you perceive it and how you, you know, capture it. So this is a simple tree fern, a small uh, tree fern, which is growing, shot from a top angle, making sure that, you know, it, it, it looks lovely and looks green. So everything in Western Ghats, it might be an insect or a, a dead leaf or anything which is definitely worth a photograph. So this is one of my uh, favorite uh, frogs, uh, the pseudophilotus species, a bush frog species. Mm -hmm. So the vocal sac is something what you can see with another, with a vein on the sac. So Mm -hmm. they get active. They get active during the monsoon and they keep calling throughout the monsoon and it is basically their mating season. So all the Mm -hmm. frogs come into their life, come into life and, you know, they start calling, calling the mate and, they reproduce. So filled with activity during monsoon. And this again attracts a lot of photographers, attracts a lot of people across the globe to the guards. I was really shocked to believe that a lot of people from foreign countries who visit Western Guards during the monsoon just to see frogs and snakes. Okay. Uh, not really surprising, but it is really shocking that uh, uh, and it is it's very difficult to believe and you have to believe that Western Ghats is so famous, uh, the life forms it contains in terms of the biodiversity, what we have here, it is not found anywhere else on earth, apart from other places in Costa Rica, Brazil. Yeah. Western Ghats is definitely a place worth visiting. And uh, this was again another image uh, which uh, made me again a little popular and gave me a lot of happiness, which was published on uh, Nargio magazine mm-hmm. uh, in 2013. That's this was shot during the peak of monsoon. Uh, I had two friends called Girish and uh, Pritam along with me. And mm-hmm. uh, one of the guys was holding an umbrella and it was raining. Okay. And uh, shot with a D7000 with a Tamron 90mm uh, external focusing macro lens. Oh, so it was uh, making sound like a grinder and uh, <laughs> focusing you know, to and fro, to and fro. And finally, I could capture some images. And uh, basically, the condition in the guards is not favorable okay. most of the times. Okay. It'll be raining. So to protect your gear itself is a challenge. And mm-hmm. uh, every photo what I've taken so far and when I have a look at it, it you know, uh, pulls all the memory uh, back into my mind and you know, makes me think it was actually not an easy task at all. Yeah. So when you capture it right, I think you know it can tell a story. Yeah. 
So some people ask me, is it the saliva which is dropping from the snake? What yeah. is that? No, it's actually a water droplet <laughs> from the rain. Yeah. Wow. So this is probably the most photographed tree in Kudremukh National Park because everybody who uh, goes for a trek to the peak will nef- definitely not see it while going, but while coming back, this is how you see the tree. Okay. So. And the clouds playing there, and uh, the monsoon rains, the lush green shola grasslands. It, it's a wonderful scene, and shot with a cell phone. Not mm-hmm. that you should have a DSLR camera always uh, in your kit, but also a phone which is waterproof can yeah. make a lot of magic. True. So these are fungi. This was shot uh, a month back here in uh, Sharavati. Mm-hmm. Taking a walk uh, with my friends to see some spots to. Uh, shoot for the film what we're working on okay. uh, this this takara is you know it was uh, orange in color and we've lit it up with a phone from behind okay. and uh, with shot with another phone so most of the photos what you see here are shot with the cell phone oh. dslr cameras will probably be pain a lot of times when you know it, it rains a lot and it's difficult to manage yeah, yeah so this one is again a wine snake uh, okay. a mildly venomous uh, snake Oh. Very common in the Western Ghats. This is what normally it does. You know, uh, it is a good climber, mm-hmm. uh, and it's a master of camouflage. You know, this is very difficult. Uh, there are high chances that you will miss out one when you're walking in a, a trail or a trek, and I'm sure you would have missed a couple of them next to you. It, it needs some tuning to the eyes to spot them in the trees and bushes where they are. A lot but of I times, thought they are non-venomous. I didn't know they are slightly venomous. Yeah, they're mildly venomous. I've gotten bitten. Uh, twice so far, but nothing happened to me, uh, either okay. the snake. <laughs> so they're very excellent uh, climbers and they've got a very good, uh, strong backbone. Oh. And that is what makes them to, you know, climb a good height, even if it is not on the tree. If it is on the ground, if you give a stick to it, like say three, four feet above, depending on the size of the snake, it will climb easily. Oh. They're very strong, very strong. So, oh. yeah. This is a jog night frog, very beautiful frog. I love the the, the rhombus shape uh, eyes, eyelids, what they have. Yeah. And uh, if a person who is not aware of the frog calls, if they are not sure of how the how these this particular frog calls, and they go to a stream in the places where these frogs are found, I'm sure they'll get scared. It no. calls like some alien creature, <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, Nisha, I'm waiting to get you guys here. I want to scare you sometimes. <laughs> That's so... what I was about to say. I was about to say we should do this once together. <laughs> yeah, but fear is the first thing which will enter your heart for sure. But once you know what's happening around you, then I'm, I'm sure you'll start loving everything because that is how uh, you know uh, magical the guards are and uh, these frogs. They make different different sounds. You know, this particular frog makes a very uh, loud sound. Where, mm-hmm. you no, know, again, they, they'll be calling to uh, uh, invite a mate or to get noted from a mate. And uh, only male frogs call; females don't call. Okay. So, uh, louder the call, more chances uh, that the male will get a female. Okay. Uh, but yeah, uh, it is different with uh, us. Anyway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So this is a frog which is found in most of the streams in Sharavati Valley, okay. and um, uh, not more than uh, one to one and a half inches. But the oh. sound you will not believe that this frog is making it because it's so loud. It amplifies, and okay. uh, whenever the the weather is very uh, you no know, uh, misty and the air density is high, they use that time to call even more because. That should reach the female, which is pretty far from the male or something like that. So oh, okay. they make a very loud sound. And for us, it is, you know, uh, the calls will trigger two things. One is the female will get triggered. Okay. And the second one is us photographers will know, okay, there's a frog here. <laughs> so we, can, <laughs> we can track them. So one of the uh, shots from the Valley of Sharavati, the river, what you see here, Sharavati River. Okay. And the falls to the left side is not named. I don't, I don't think it is named because... We see from the falls side, where, where you see the waterfall, there is a oh. road that side. Okay. <clears throat> Normally, we cannot see the this side of the valley because you overlook it. Okay. So we, we, I flew a drone and uh, that's how we can get the image. It shot last year. It was not uh, raining heavily, but now probably this falls is water, you know, filled with water. And I'm sure it will be looking lovely. 
the river look like falling from the sky yeah of course it you know it is magical <laughs> okay. yeah beautiful and sometimes you know you cannot see anything here the valley will be covered completely with clouds and mist and you can not even know there is a valley yeah. in the river here yeah this point of time it will be like that so the best time to visit here sharavati would be i mean any western ghats would be during monsoon and off monsoon will be also you know a little difficult uh, very uh, filled with ticks and all those things oh, okay <laughs> so these uh, the frog what you saw the jog night frog these yeah. are the eggs of the frog you can see tadpoles in it this was yeah. shot with a little more advanced equipment shot with a a7s3 and a lowa probe lens okay with some light from lc500 uh, godox so this one uh, <clears throat> after the frogs uh, lay the eggs the mm-hmm. female uh, lays the eggs the male guards the eggs okay the male frog they guard and they will be sitting next to the uh, eggs and they'll be guarding it and also mm-hmm. they keep calling maybe to tell that okay this is my territory don't come near to other okay. frogs and uh, this particular photo was taken when it was very dry <clears throat> because the rain had stopped for a weeks time and uh-huh. it was not raining at all so okay. the frogs uh, were so clever and <clears throat> they know it so well that this particular frog was going down to the stream making mm-hmm. the hands and legs wet coming back and you no know, giving the moisture to the eggs oh so they were trying to keep the eggs so wet so that they don't die yeah so <clears throat> we look at a frog and we we just think that okay it's a frog but yeah. trust me they're so intelligent they are so uh, probably they know the things really well in terms of uh, the weather it, when it rains they know it really well because of course it rains and if it is not raining they know what to do and they know how to take care of their eggs yeah so it's, it's a wonderful science behind their behavior so you have to understand that also to get nice nice images and these tadpoles will stay on this leaf for 7 to 8 days and they hatch and they drop into the water okay yeah wow. so this one uh, i'm sure uh, most of them would have heard it they are cicadas yes. they keep calling <clears throat> so these are the ones which are audible most of the time in the forest rainforest especially yeah so the one you see on the top which is just stuck to the leaf is the molt from which the cicada has emerged and the color is what we see here on the leaf of cicada it stays not more than uh, uh, half an hour or one hour so after that it will go away so that um, is the window you'll have to probably wait and you know capture the colors otherwise the w- wings will become brownish okay and uh, cicadas they don't stay uh, you know alive for more than 3 uh, 4 days they come out of their uh, uh, pupa which is stuck to the leaf and they they take birth just to mate with the female and they die oh and uh, they feed on the sap which is produced on the tree you can see a lot of cicada sitting on the tree bark and you know trying to suck the sap from there that's how they feed a few days they live and they die so this is also very interesting uh, animal to you know to see and photograph in the gardens so nisha tell me what is this this is the one which all the people are after they get hold okay. of it uh, uh, you're talking about the two headed snake yeah no this is actually not a snake this is a frog which looks like a snake yeah <laughs> so basically it's an amphibian uh, it's called uh, sicilian uh, the scientific oh. name of this is ichthyophis bombaensis bombay sicilian so they look very similar to a snake uh, they, but they don't have scales this? this individual was 1 uh, and 1/2 feet long what yeah Uh this is a yeah, full grown one or it's in the journey of becoming a frog uh don't know not much has been studied about uh, the length and the journey of their life but yeah this this looks scary also i'm sure you know for a lot of people who don't know what it is and mm-hmm. um, it is difficult very difficult to you know catch one because you can see the body is completely you no know, slimy yeah. it's shining and uh, they secrete something called as mucus throughout the body which is also a defensive mechanism for them to escape from their predator okay and uh, here towards the left side you can see one small circle which is the eye just okay. next to the eye you, have, you can see a small hair kind of thing so kind of tentacle you know that is something which helps the animal to sense its surrounding they mm-hmm. burrow underground they will be underground most of the time when it is raining heavily they come on the road maybe the reasons might be many maybe they'll be moving in terms of uh, you know in search of food or maybe mating Okay. they also are amphibians and they are totally harmless they don't bite they're not poisonous they're not venomous they are just 
as cute as your pet dog <laughs> but they they are slimy they are very but slippery what do they eat they feed on uh, insect larva insect eggs and uh, sometimes earthworms where is the mouth i mouth, don't see it extreme uh, maybe i can uh, probably send, send a you no know, close up photo of the head okay <laughs> they, they cannot even open the mouth very wide they Ooh. can open very low, very slight opening uh, can be done and they probably eat a uh, uh, earthworm like a noodle like uh, hobby oh maggie you know it's like that i thought this is either an earthworm or a snake <laughs> yeah this this is totally uh, common what people uh, you know think because they look like snake and they move yeah. also like snake that serpentine motion they yeah. move like that and a lot of people they even kill it by thinking it's a snake and oh. there a lot of myths about these creatures you know in the ghats and wherever they are found they think it is venomous you know if you touch that something will happen all those no no nonsense is that but yeah. uh, trust me they are absolutely harmless nothing nothing will happen to, to us but how do even people realize this is a frog it is not a snake uh, until unless i'm expert like you are around no but i said i, I used the word frog which look like a snake is that they belong to amphibian family <clears throat> they are amphibians <laughs> so yeah. again uh, amphibian again you know it's uh, again the schooling system has not uh, given uh, enough information to a lot of us most of us yeah. because if if i ask you nisha what is an amphibian oh, it will be quite difficult to put it no, across you can just tell me you can recollect in your 7th and 8th standard and tell me what is an amphibian again i think it's better you put it across rather than me by blabbering <laughs> no actually uh, normally people tell that uh, amphibian is something which lives both in water and land yeah that is what they call amphibian but it is not the right explanation because uh, amphibians have uh, a life which is lived in two phases the first phase they live like a fish inside the water okay. and they use their gills to breathe just like fishes okay and once the metamorph- metamorphosis you know proceeds then they slowly get out of water the gills are absorbed into the body the gills are closed and they start breathing from their wet skin okay. or even through nostrils also but if if you know if the explanation which is given in the textbooks which says anything which lives in water and land, land. is an amphibian it doesn't hold good at all because if i go for swimming for half a day and come back will i be an amphibian <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so even these things you know we are trying to uh, you know educate and give some information possible from rn because i am not from science background at all i am a journalism here. graduate and uh, everything what i've known and what i'm learning is only just through passion and nothing else i've met some right people in the journey and you know asked a lot of questions eaten their heads out and you know given them a lot of torture and trouble and got information from them and a lot of books and <laughs> that that's how it happens and uh, about these i had no idea the first time when i saw it i knew it was not a snake because i was already into snakes and snakes okay. have scales and these don't have scales okay yeah that's one way you yeah. <laughs> to identify yeah. it yeah and to identify different species you'll have to count the number of rings on the body which is oh. not possible for us <laughs> so it, it needs special apparatus and stuff but different different uh, species of uh, this particular thing it looks mm-hmm. different way there are okay. some more uh, ichthyophis bedomi which which has got two colors so it, they come in different colors and different sizes okay right yes. so again um, in in western ghats when uh, we photograph uh, frogs and snakes and and whatsoever it's not that you have to show uh, only close up you have to show only the body you have to go close to the eyes no it's not like that so you have to make sure that you play with good light and mm-hmm. you know you tell a story behind it so this shot was uh, shot in uh, chikmangalur yeah long back in 2016 i guess and frog was sitting on the other side of the leaf yeah. so when the other person who was with me was searching for sn- snakes and frogs on the other side he just put a light on this uh, particular leaf and i could see it from this side so i told mm-hmm. him please hold on hold on for, for a while and let me take an image like this so they, they look good so you have a lot of opportunities in western ghats to shoot not just uh, you know big say big birds or big snakes like king everybody asked me if uh, i have a camp in agumbe so will you show me king cobra <laughs> <laughs> so king cobra is not the ultimate thing to see you know there are a lot of other things which are small yet extremely important of course king cobra is also very important a very majestic snake but a lot of other things what we have have also to enjoy so this uh, is one of my very favorite images in the sets of avatar movie 
Oh, yeah, that's what I was about to ask you. <laughs> is this? Yeah, the, when you see here, the green color, yeah. uh, it is actually a pile of wood, which was uh, fallen, shot in Amboli uh, five years back. And uh, we were helping. We were helping. Oh. We, have, we had, I had a team. I had a team of eight people. Mm-hmm. We were in the stream and we were searching and uh, had my, my other person called Srikanth. He was mm-hmm. with uh, the group and he was trying to see some snakes. And they mm-hmm. found a snake and they found some frogs there and shooting pictures. Okay. I was uh, on the other side of the stream and I was telling him, okay, I'll let me find something here. You go and uh, make them, uh, help them to take photographs. Okay. So I bent to see something and my torch fell on in water, my head torch. Okay. And uh, I was just not removing the water from the torch and uh, I had to turn the torch off. When I turned it off, it was pitch dark. I couldn't see a single thing. And slowly in front of me, there's something which is getting lit. Slowly the light started coming out. Okay. Then I realized, look, something glowing. I actually got scared for a while because mm. the light was actually very bright. Okay. If you close your eyes without light for, say, five to six seconds, you could see the whole pile of wood, which to- totally fluorescent color. It was mm. beautiful to look at. Very beautiful. Then slowly I started calling everybody, guys, please come here. You have something very exciting to see. Mm. So these, even though the wood is, the tree is dead and the wood is, you know, it is not of any life now. All the fungus which have started growing on this particular uh, pile of wood, they oh. emit light. Oh. It's bioluminescent fungi. So wow. you have these fungi in uh, most of the places in Western Ghats. It is throughout Western Ghats you can find them. But the reason why not many people can see is because they do not walk in a stream without a torch. <laughs> because yeah. it is very scary to wa- walk in a stream without a torch because you know, don't know what you're you know, just bumping into. Uh, yeah. So, and daytime, there's no way you can see this. So, you'll have to go to a stream and turn your torch off and just close your eyes for some time to set to the proper light. And then if you open, you will see a lot of bright things around you. Maybe some fireflies and all these bioluminous fungi and a lot of things. And this fungi was like a carpet, a very, very tiny microscopic uh, fungi, Mm -hmm. which grows like a powder on the uh, wooden wooden, uh, logs. And there are a couple of them which grows like what we call as mushroom, the small mushroom which comes with a stick and an umbrella. Uh-huh. That kind of fungi also we have. Okay. So they come in different, different shapes, different, different sizes. But trust me, Nisha, just to have a look at it in that deep jungle next to a stream with all the frogs and insects making sound, you watch it and slowly it is getting lit. It is like a set of avatar. Yeah, <laughs> it it's so like, uh, even, <laughs> even it sounds like some fairy tale. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure that even you know, James Cameron would have got inspired by this if, if, if it's true. <laughs> because true. that is you know, because nature is inspiration to a lot of us, and I'm sure they would have picked up something from this kind of bioluminous creatures, not if not fungi. I'm yeah. sure it might be something else. So it helps us to tell a lot of stories. Mm-hmm. So this is a wine snake, which is a brown wine snake. Yeah. This is very difficult to spot. This was spotted by my friend called Pritam. Um, yeah. And uh, he, he along with Girish Gauda and uh, I were you now here in the Western Ghats Sharavati and we were walking towards my friend's house, the trail, and uh, he saw this snake and he spot, asking me to see it. I couldn't spot it. It was very no. difficult because it looks like a twig. Okay. Unless it opens the mouth and puffs its body up, it looks like a twig and it is very difficult to spot this because they also rest on the brown uh, trees and you know, where it is like dead and broken. Okay. On the kind of brown and dead uh, trees, so it's very difficult to spot, and unless they move, you'll not yeah. be able to find and know it's a snake there. So it was a nice experience. So I've got this snake only twice uh, in my, you know, field experience of over twenty years. So very difficult to spot, and wonderful snake. And the reason why they open their mouth, yeah, I was is... about to ask you that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the reason why they open is that they get they feel threatened, they feel scared if any, anything big moves in front of them. Okay. So initially, I thought it's only when we go and uh, you know uh, get the snake and try to photograph, they do this. But I observed some wine snakes opening the mouth when a cattle has come very close to the fence and it is grazing. Okay. They feel it is a threat and they open the mouth. I've seen it like two, three times. Then I felt, okay, this is a common behavior of showing the predator away. Telling mm-hmm. that, okay, I'm also big. I'll bite you. Don't come close to me. Something like that. So this one is also venomous? This is also mildly venomous. Okay. So the, the, the thing mildly venomous means that they have venom, but mm-hmm. the venom what these mildly venomous snakes have will mm-hmm. affect and paralyze only their uh, mm-hmm. victims, their prey. Okay. But if, if a human gets bitten by this non, 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 mildly venomous snakes, not much will happen to us. But a big mildly venomous snake probably bites a kid, a small uh, 
child or something. So then it might be a little serious, but we don't have such incidents here. But again, good to be careful, irrespective of venomous, non-venomous, mild venomous snakes. It's good to be always careful with snakes. Snakes, yeah. they, they might have uh, toxic saliva because they don't brush, no, like us. So yeah. <laughs> they might have toxic saliva, which, which might give you some bad wounds and different. Yeah. So I think Nisha, you know this. You know, of you know this really, really well. Yeah. So we have a lot of them here. Okay. Um, Tatekad is very famous uh, for okay. frog mouths, but trust me, Sharavati has a lot of them. Not not much has been explored here because uh, people don't know that you know it's found in Sharavati also. Yeah. This is very close to the place where I'm sitting right now. Oh. Maybe a uh, ten minutes walk, I can show you one right now. <laughs> All right. So yeah, they're they're very good in numbers. And uh, the calls are so peculiar that you know that it's very easy to spot them. Yeah. Beautiful bird. And we have these as well, Zwei Trump Shama. So Western Guards just doesn't offer snakes and frogs. They have everything, everything in them. Insects, yeah. snakes, frogs, birds, mammals, whatnot. Yeah. Yep. And so we were ant short in the evening. So you can actually do everything in terms of photography, starting from wide till macro. You can do everything in the guards. It is so, so wonderful. So a dung beetle doing its yeah. job. <laughs> so even this is very, you know, lovely to uh, see and sit and observe. Yeah. It's a small story uh, behind, uh, you know, the signs, what, you know, the, the activity, what uh, they do. The male dung beetles, they come flying once the dung is dropped from an animal. They come and they make the balls of dung and they take it and they put it in a place where the female comes. It checks if the dung is okay with it, they will mate and the female will lay eggs inside the dung. Okay. And then the dung beetles emerge and they start feeding on the dung which is around them and then they fly. So there is a reason behind everything what behavior any animal does. So observation is something which we have to do sitting and you know, observing them and that's how we know it, it happens. This is a tortoise we found in Tatekad. Yeah, I was talking mm -hmm. about Tatekad and this here. A very tiny uh, Indian black tortoise, most probably. So it is crawling right next to us. We're trying to see some, uh, uh, which bird was that? Yeah, black baza. We uh -huh. could get black baza. Be oh. Just before that, we got this very slowly, slow. I couldn't capture it because <laughs> I was trying to shoot in uh, high shutter speed. I used to oh. get that completely frozen motion. I wanted mm -hmm. one of the legs to be a little blurred, so it was a big circus to do this. It does it so slowly, yeah. walk so slowly that, uh, yeah, this is mm -hmm. one of my favorite frogs. I mean, I, I would say this to all the frogs. <laughs> <I love laughs> the frogs. This is a, a Calpeta yellow bush frog or mm -hmm. water droplet frog. And scientific name is Rauchesis neurostogona. This is found in high elevation rainforest. Okay. This was shot in Agumbe. So uh, whenever we used to go to Agumbe, we used to hear this frog call. Every time, every time in monsoon, we've been trying to find this frog. It was never, never happening. Because they all sit on treetops and they keep calling from there. So, and even to see it is so difficult. It looks like yeah, the tree. Yeah, it looks like uh, the moss and the lichens which yeah. grow on the tree. Just like that. It is very difficult to spot them. And luckily, uh, two, three years back, uh, when we were on the trail, one of my friends called Arvind, he spotted this frog and he was telling, so I, was, I think there is an Amboli bush frog here. I said, okay, it's Amboli, leave it, it's okay, it's common. But he said, okay, please come and have a look at it once again. I am a little doubtful. I came, I saw this, my eight <laughs> years of search ended there. <laughs> I was so happy. I was so happy that I said, guys, we are not doing anything after this. This is a bumper we've got. Let us take photographs. <laughs> so, I'm such a rare frog and it, it calls like, a water droplet falling into a bucket of water. Like, oh. tuck, tuck. it is a beautiful call to even listen to. Oof. So, Oof. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, this um, uh, is the, this is a fly. It's a common house fly, what you see in this photo, which is sitting on the king cobra's hood. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> but how do you manage to? Stand next to a cobra like this. Uh, this was uh, on 31st of December 2019, if I'm not wrong. Because 31st, uh, we came to Sharavati because we normally mm -hmm. come to Sharavati for New Year. Okay. And uh, even that uh, year, we were here. And I got call from 
uh, Honawar. Honawar is one place where I worked with Forest Department and I've made few films for them. Uh-huh. And uh, I got a call from them saying they've got a King Cobra and they were about to release that because I was shooting a film for them that point of time. So okay. they called me. Okay. Uh, that I was very close to Honawar. I said I'll come there. So I went mm-hmm. there. We're about to release and it, it started drizzling. Surprisingly, okay. in December it, it, 31st, it drizzled a little and a few water troubles sat on the head of the King Cobra. I thought, okay, let me take a shot from the back because there was a guy who was handling it. He was in front okay. of it. And okay. I went behind the King Cobra and I... Because this snake was about 12 feet long. Oof. And any small uh, mistake would have uh, you know, caused uh, my yeah. life because there is no antivenom for King Cobra bite in India as of now. Okay. Um, so I, was, I went behind the snake and I had a Canon uh, 5D Mark IV, my friend's camera, with a 100mm lens. Okay. So uh, I went behind it. The hood was not really you know, very high. It was a little low, maybe uh, some two, two and a half feet long. So went uh-huh. behind it. This guy was standing in front of it. He was trying to distract it before he could release the snake. And I went behind. I set the frame and suddenly a fly came and sat in the <laughs> middle of the head. <laughs> okay. So I just took three shots. Okay. This one shot without the fly. Okay. One shot with the fly, and the next shot was without the fly. Okay. So it was it was actually a very you know uh, breathtaking moment for me because standing right so behind uh, the yes. longest venomous snake in the world, it is not a small thing. And also, I would like to mention that these kind of things would be a little you know risky, very risky. Yeah. But no, you have to understand the behavior of the snakes. You should know how it behaves in what situation. Okay. Uh, we know it's wildlife. We cannot predict how it behaves, especially reptiles. It is yeah. not very easy at all. But uh, we can come into some kind of understanding uh, with the experience what we've got in terms of snakes because uh, there is a certain way it behaves in certain situations. So you should understand that. Okay. And also know what you're exactly doing and have very, very uh, you know precise caution and be very careful about your behavior, your movement. Mm-hmm. And if you slightly move a little faster, probably that would be, you know, triggering the snake and yeah. it will help it turn towards you and all those things. Yeah. So, I mean, we, know, we all know that no snake will come just to bite you because they'll mind their own business unless yeah. we do. Yeah. <laughs> so we just have to make sure that we don't harm them. We don't, you know, uh, corner them and things like that. We, we can take photos like this. But I would suggest anybody trying these kind of photos, be very careful. Mm-hmm. Be very, very extra careful and have uh, people around you and uh, also know exactly what you're doing because this would not be a easy task. It's very difficult. Oh, one question. So what yeah. what if in case a cobra bite you? If this king cobra would have bitten me, I would have done something which I, would, I want to do all my life, the last thing which I could do, and then die. <laughs> so there is no uh, it, option if, to survive? No. Uh, no. Uh, king cobra bite, if it uh, injects venom into you, you are dead. In okay. probably some time, I don't know how long it will take for a person to die in King Cobra. Maybe half wow. an hour, 40 minutes, one hour. If it was a diff- another snake, if it was a cobra, mm-hmm. then uh, you don't have to worry because we have antivenom in India for all big four snakes of India. Uh, spectacle Cobra, uh, Common Crate, Russell's Viper and saw scale Viper. Mm-hmm. These snakes, if, you, if they bite uh, you, we can get antivenom for them. We can get treated and be cured. But there will be some damage for sure. Because whenever the venom enters your body, it does its job. Because the job of venom is to digest whatever it, it gets into. Because it digests the enzyme of a snake. Okay. So, king cobra bite, no hopes at all. Uh, if it was a cobra, then yes, you can not be so scared. But any snake bite, <laughs> you have to treat it the same way. So, okay. getting bitten is at, not at all an option. Not no getting idea. bitten is something which we can have, we have to bank on. Not getting bitten is something we'll have to follow any point of time because you just don't have to be careless or be very carefree if it is a venomous, if it's a non-venomous snake. Oh, it's okay. It's a green wine snake. Nothing will happen. Oh, it's a rat snake. Nothing will happen. No. So that is where the respect, you know, comes into picture. We have to respect yeah. every subject what we shoot. It might not be, you know, as big as a tiger. It might not be as big as a king cobra. But if it is the smallest fly what we're shooting, we'll have to respect them and keep in that safe distance. So yeah. that will keep you safe and keep the subject safe. Sure. So this is a wine snake. So yeah, wine snake, uh, I think, you know, it has been a favorite for a lot of people because National Geographic has been giving awards to a lot yes. of photos of wine snakes. 
Yeah. No, uh, starting, I think mine was the first photo which actually got uh, recognized by Nat Geo, and then somebody from Tirthali got recognition. Somebody from uh, uh, even uh, Arunaditya was. Ah, uh, Arunaditya got recognized for. You know, this is a beautiful king snake, and it's very photogenic. So it depends on the wonderful, the right angle, what you choose, and the right background you choose. I, I'm sure everybody can make wonderful images of king snake. Yeah. And no, this is not a uh, you no know, snake to be scared of. Also, you know, not venomous. This can be a little relaxed mode. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the dancing beauties of the streams of the Western Ghats called dancing frog. One mm -hmm. of the species of dancing frogs. So Micrisalis is the scientific name, uh, and mm -hmm. they are beautiful. Actually, we were filming uh, this particular species a uh, few days back. And it is such a you know festival to watch them uh, you know behave and their mating ritual, mating behavior, their calling, mm -hmm. the foot flagging. It is beautiful. I think you know you can you can be more excited when our film comes out next July end. Okay. Uh, it'll have all the answers for things what I'm talking about now. <laughs> it'll That's be covering fun. snakes and frogs. So yeah. about snakes and frogs, I'm sure we can have more good connection. And the reason why we are doing this film is to get again. Snakes and frogs close to people, so I'm, I'm pretty sure of doing that. Let's see. <laughs> yeah. So next one, this is uh, a Malabar pit viper. Okay. This was shot in Amboli. Okay. So again, they sit motionless. They sit still because they are ambush predators. They sit <laughs> very quietly. They wait for the prey to come close to them, and then they bite and they eat. So they don't chase like rat snakes or no other snakes, uh, different uh, non-venomous snakes. They sit and wait patiently. Okay. They, and they can be good subjects to, you know, photograph in the monsoon, like water droplets or something like this. Yeah. Light, light is something which is very, very important. So all your photographs depends on the wonderful lighting what we try and make. <laughs> and yeah. most of the photos what we have, uh, what I've sh what I've shot here in the night time, yeah. they're all shot with one single light. Most okay. of them. Because okay. one single torch. Uh, we don't use flash. Okay. For snakes, it is uh, to an extent it is okay to use uh, flash, but on frogs, I personally avoid or I don't use flash on uh, frogs. I use uh, diffused light. Mm -hmm. I have a Godox LC500. I use okay. that with another kerchief on that, or I have a uh, Joby uh, small uh, what do you call that? Uh, some small light. Mm -hmm. So that light it comes with a diffuser. So one okay. concentrate is fine because the flash. It might make the frogs temporarily blind, you know, and it is not advised to use flash okay. on the you no know, frogs. So uh -huh. we also teach them. You no, know, we also teach our party. We tell them, you know, give our uh, uh, participants some suggestions and you know, guide, you know, tips and tricks how to make you know good photographs. Also, in terms of making sure that the frogs and snakes are treated well. You know, the well-being of the animal is very important to us. We don't yeah. want to disturb any uh, animal, so that you know it, it disturbs the life of the animal later. Oh, okay. So uh, this is a Malabar gliding frog, one of the common frogs in the Western Ghats. Very photogenic, yeah. beautiful. You can see this yellow tinge on the frog. No, this yellow torch, what I was using. Oh, okay. <laughs> I did have a white torch, <laughs> so a little bit of yellowish. Otherwise, the belly part is white, okay. the top part is green. Yeah. Okay. So hmm. this is also a Malabar pit viper. Uh, Malabar pit vipers come in different different uh, morphs, uh -huh. different col colors. Orange, orange colored uh, Malabar pit viper is dream for so many photographers who shoot in Western Ghats. Rare mm -hmm. to find, beautiful to you know capture, and that way especially you can see here in the, in the green background, yeah. it looks totally out, you know, standing out and so gorgeous. And they give nice poses. They don't really you know they're not fast snakes. They don't, they don't move very fast, but strike is very fast. They bite very fast. So to keep again the safe distance is something which we have to follow. Okay. Again, another wine snake from a top angle. So the brown background, what we see is the ground. It's a brown yeah. uh, mud, muddy ground, what do you see? And the eyes try to focus. The mm -hmm. snake is beautiful. It, it looks good from all angles. <laughs> so this is another uh, another morph of uh, Malaba Pit Viper. So here mm -hmm. I used a wide angle uh, lens okay. just to uh, also capture the background, you know, how mm -hmm. where it lives and, you know, yeah. Most of the snakes uh, photographed in the world, uh, Nisha, most of them are handled because oh, yeah. it is not uh, possible to take the photo of a snake in its natural habitat wherever it is sitting or wherever it is perching because yeah. they live inside the bush. They stay inside the bush expecting a frog to come close, expecting a lizard to come close. 
So most of the frogs, what we have taken, they are untouched because once you touch the frog, yeah. they will stop their activity. Okay. If we see any frog photo where it is calling with the vocal sac open, that yeah. is possible only if you don't touch the frog or if you don't disturb the frog at all. Okay. If the moment it is disturbed, it will stop calling. It will mm. just you know, go very down to the place where it is sitting and it will shrink its body and sit there because okay. of fear. Okay. But snake, you'll have to probably you know pick it up from a place and put it in a place mm. where it can make a good frame to you, a good platform to sit and then they'll see the background and everything, then shoot. Okay. So maybe a lot of people might uh, misunderstand. Okay, did you find the snake like this? Was it sitting like this? This snake was, yeah, it was sitting there. Amboli is a place where you have the natural setup for a lot of you know pit vipers and wine snakes, which will be sitting in natural habitat. Okay. But here in Sharavati, if I probably find a pit viper, you'll have to slowly pick it up using a hook, put it okay. in the place where it can sit there, uh -huh. keep it and come back for a while, and then it'll rest there and then go take pictures and leave it back to the place where we found it. Okay. This would be probably some 10 feet, 20 feet from where it was, but not shift places. That is a okay. very wrong thing for snakes. They might get, par they will get, they get paranoid. Okay. So, again, to but shoot if you snakes. Are going to pick it up from one place and keep it in another place, they just don't move. Pit wipers don't move. Uh, okay. Wine snakes, so you don't have to pick them up because wherever they'll be staying, they will be on the tree. Okay. Wine snakes will probably, most of the time, I've seen them on my eye level or a little above. Or a little below they'll be on the tree only but their head will be sticking out of the tree okay. to see if there is any frog any snake move any movement of frogs or any snake or the lizards mm -hmm. so when snakes can be easily shot but pit vipers sometimes where they sit it will be inside a very you know, thick bush so in that case you'll have to slowly pick it up and put it outside so okay. this is a normal you no know, routine of a job you know in kind of a naturalist because whenever we uh, get people uh, to uh, shoot snakes mm -hmm. they'll be initially surprised but later, when they see, see uh, snakes which are inside, they'll realize that it is not possible to shoot a single image. But mm -hmm. overall, what I'm trying to tell you is that you have a guide, you have mm -hmm. a proper naturalist who knows what he's doing. Yeah. And again, when it comes to handling, do not you know, handle in a rough way. It's just like a baby what you know, hold you hold in your arms. It's, it's as soft as possible, as mm -hmm. gentle as possible. That is when you can avoid accidents. Yeah. And first of all, we getting into the habitat itself is a disturbance for the yeah. animals which are living there but True. in spite of that we have to be as careful as gentle as possible to avoid uh, you know any kind of more disturbance that be caused to the animals so being ethical is something which which is very very necessary because when we go on a safari yeah. there are high there are high there, there are low chances of you know uh, disturbance what we do to the animals which are living in the forest because the road is clear the microfauna, you cannot do anything. If the frog is there on the road, vehicle, jeep will go on that, it is fine. But here, there's not a safari road where we go into the Western Ghats. It's a small trail. Okay. There are a lot of things crossing there. You know, there are a lot of frogs there, a lot of ants, ant lanes crossing, a lot of insects, a lot of you know, uh, frogs, snakes, a lot of things. So okay. we have to be extra careful when it comes to uh, when you walk and you take pictures, especially macro. Okay. Because you cannot do it on a safari jeep. You have to get out of your foot. You have to start walking in the forest. That is when you see these small, small lives, you know, sitting and you know, doing their activity. Otherwise, it's not possible. Okay. So, yeah, photography in the guards. You can see a small frog to the right yeah. corner. So, that is a Nictibetrachus jog, jog night frog. Okay. That is how they sit. So, this is actually during the daytime. Uh -huh. The daytime, they, they, they don't call. This frog, normally, they call in the night. Mm hmm and uh, daytime they sit on the rock in the middle of the stream and they just bask there probably getting the heat from the sun or just relaxing but the activity will start majorly in the night time okay so there are a few things which uh, i've mentioned mm -hmm. which will uh, help you know uh, people who aspire to uh, shoot in the western guards some things mm -hmm. which can help them to you know take photos of uh, their wonderful favorite beings like snakes frogs and insects okay yeah, so mm -hmm. this is the course this is how and again this was crossing the road i was driving and i stopped suddenly i got down the vehicle and even this snake these are this is a snake which actually gets killed most because they come on the road they'll be crossing okay i don't know i'm not sure if, if, if it is because of the heat which the road absorbs or I don't know why, but green wine snakes, most of them, they come and they rest on the road and they don't move. Oh. They'll be right there. Okay. A lot of times I have actually 
uh, seen a lot of snakes on the road and i've gone i've put a, put them in the center and i've gone there if a snake is very big you cannot mm-hmm. even leave in, leave them in the center of the car okay. <laughs> either of the tire will run over it so okay. driving in the west, in the ghats is very very you know uh, it's very crucial a lot of people have to be uh, very you know yes, observant yes. and very careful to you know a lot of snakes lot of frogs yesterday one of my friends uh, was showing a photo of a slender loris which was oh. out kill oh my God. i just could not believe that i was like is it is it possible how can a person not see a slender loris on top of them oh my god it's just... yeah it was it was it was dead i wanted to add the picture but yeah. it is very disturbing so i didn't put it here so this is how the snakes they move uh, slowly they were moving and even when i got on the car i parked it on the side of the road got mm-hmm. on with the camera i set my camera up and everything is still there only it was not it had not moved at all okay. then i went in front of it even then it is not moving then i went took the photos then i came this side and slowly touched the tail and then it crossed the road in that okay. time three four vehicles crossed so oh. we were there we could you know send the vehicles in the other, other direction but otherwise nobody will even see that you know, the snake is crossing the road you should be careful it doesn't just occur so this is the photo what i took from this particular scene this okay. shot wow so beauties beauties are everywhere in the western ghats you just have to have an eye to look at it and you know capture it i yeah this one again came yeah again we have mammals also western ghats again is filled with mammals might not be uh, as uh, easy uh, to spot a mammal as in you know in uh, safari but we have a lot of endangered animals here in the western ghats this is a lion tail macaque yeah shot uh, in sharavati valley i was working on uh, this documentary for forest department uh, then i during that time i shot this particular picture beautiful animals to observe extremely shy okay. and uh, yeah when we observe them that uh, uh, even one of the smallest behaviors what they have a lot to learn you know there was yeah. a jackfruit tree i think yeah. i have the photo i had uh, there was a jackfruit tree and there was a big jackfruit which was ripe and the head of the family head of the group came first the alpha male it came yeah. and started eating the jackfruit okay it had it for almost 10 minutes mm-hmm. until this guy was done there was not even a single lantern mukha came and disturbed that okay it waited for the male to finish and have then another uh, male came another female came so okay. they were turn by turn they were slowly eating uh, the jackfruit and ultimately everybody in the group gets a chance but i was just comparing that to you know uh, us uh, <laughs> let's say that you no know, we have a party at home and if i put some chips or some uh, you know some items in the plate and put it in the center of five people it is gone in 2 minutes <laughs> <laughs> <That's true. laughs> you know so yeah small small observation so yeah. i can write a scientific paper on this <laughs> so this this is how they behave they are so well behaved they are so well mannered they don't yeah. uh, you know uh, they treat each and every individual of the family with a lot of respect that's fine. and e- everybody gets equal chance so it might be a hierarchy which is followed you know the male the, the alpha male gets it first and then the hierarchy but again it, it's a good thing the, everybody got it that is the ultimate uh, key yeah. so 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 fun to watch them so Oof. it's yeah it's dinner time in india <laughs> it's 9:30 okay. and yeah this was during one of the walks in agumbe Uh, okay. this wine snake was you no know, uh, feeding on this uh, bush frog this is not a bush frog or maybe a indrana species mm-hmm. it is actually lying on this this grass what do you see this okay. uh, leaf it's actually a thorny plant yeah i can see that and it was extremely surprising for us to observe that the wine snake which was feeding on this frog did not have a single prick yeah i don't know how it managed the whole snake was completely resting on this thorny plant itself but it never got punctured or pricked by a single thorn so you know, the evolution has made them so that they know what's happening you know around mm. them and they know how to you know just be there without getting hurt so wonderful that's great so again not just the head of the snake even the tail looks really wonderful if you know that can be captured you know with some symmetry and some action and some yeah. you know a pattern the indian rock python Uh, mm-hmm. shot in uh, here in sharavati valley itself shot on the phone not on the dslr because mm-hmm. not, dslr cannot uh, be very handy a lot of times so for example if this angle if i had to take for my dslr i had to change my lens to a kit lens or a wide angle lens go some yeah. you know 5 feet 10 feet high 
we put a stool stand on that all those things but <laughs> mobile phone comes very handy just take your phone up and take a photo <laughs> simple sometimes that too these days the phones camera is so good for actually correct yeah so yeah technology is improving and we will have to make the best use of that <laughs> yeah this is a cat snake uh, feeding on a pseudophilotus species of bush frog maybe a amboli bush frog it this happened in sharavati 2 years back we were filming this okay. so that is when the cat snake slowly approached this frog and suddenly got got him and had to complete feast oh. so action action happens every day you just have to wait and watch i'm sure you know this <laughs> and thanks to you to you know, for choosing this image to you know exhibit in your uh, yeah. um i was just going through the picture and i was like hey how how can i not put this photo for the presentation <laughs> so, <I'm sorry. laughs> so this is also in uh, sharavati mm -hmm. and uh, this place where i've shot this i had visited the same place again this year but the plants mm -hmm. what you see in the background they've all been chopped off oh so you can see it has it has disturbed the complete habitat and you cannot see a single frog there it is very painful to not to see any frog there because such a wonderful place for this frogs to have a lot of activity it was so wonderful I used to just love that place. Go there, sit for two hours, three hours, observe them mating, calling. Now you know it's gone. The paradise lost. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I don't know. People will also have to think about these animals also because in, before cutting these, I, I'm, I'm sure that even the person who has done it will would have done it uh, with a lot of thought and for his convenience. It might not. It might be disturbing for him with a lot of unwanted things with the plants. But still, some consideration to these small animals. I think that has to also be considered. <laughs> But do you have any idea why the plants were removed? They removed it because uh, because of these plants, the the water which was inside here is actually a man-made uh, small tank. Oh, okay. The plants had grown just behind the tank. Okay. And what the guy told me was that uh, because of the plants here, a lot of frogs are coming. You now they are putting their eggs into the water. <laughs> oh, you know, oh, oh. Uh, because of the frogs, snakes are coming. So it's a chain yeah. reaction. What he explained to me. Uh, mm -hmm. I actually stopped him uh, from doing this for almost two years, but okay. uh, later, you know, he he wins because his place, no. <laughs> so oh. he cut it. But yeah, let's see. Maybe one year it will again grow. Next year I'll go again. Let's it will come again. <laughs> yeah. So this is the black green wine snake. Uh, <laughs> I took a silhouette <laughs> of it. The shot okay. again on cell phone. Okay. Uh, here in Sharavati Valley from the bottom angle. So yeah. I I have turned it to a little black and white because only the snake was looking a little black and the trees and plants were a little greenish, but mm -hmm. I make it this way. So I changed it to this, and yeah, another monsoon mm -hmm. uh, special. It's a bronze back tree snake, extremely mm -hmm. fast snake on the tree. Okay. Uh, it's a tree snake and very difficult to get them. Okay. And surprisingly, this photo. Uh, where i've uh, you know shot this not it was not caught this no. guy was sitting on one of the overhanging uh, you know sticks of the plant and it was raining it uh -huh. stopped raining and it was a little sunny maybe he came out to bask okay. that time we saw it and we just could capture a picture beautiful. they've got a big eye very beautiful big eye very beautiful very common snakes but not not normally seen very mm -hmm. difficult to spot because they look the top part of the uh, snake is bronze in color so it's called a bronze back okay uh, tree snake looks like a tree twig okay so again a malabar gliding frog mm -hmm. from the front so be beautiful big eyes and, nice. yeah lovely eyes and whenever a frog catches an insect mm -hmm. when it swallows that is when you can see them close their eyes because yeah. it cannot swallow if it doesn't close the eyes <laughs> it pushes from top Okay. Uh, this particular action you can see it in the film what we are shooting. We've got okay. a couple of shots where frog is feeding on some insect and they close their eyes so well. It looks very cute. <laughs> I find <laughs> them so cute and so nice. So spending good time in the field is something which help you to see these kind of actions and you have to be there because sitting yeah. here in the homestay and thinking that okay, oh nothing is happening today. It is raining. It is not raining. No. It, in spite of it is you know it is raining or not raining sunny cold there will be something happening in the field yeah. just have to go there wait there sit there the you no know, the moment we go what we normally do is we go and sit there and just spend some 30 40 minutes silently without doing anything that is when okay. you slowly start getting all the movements around you 
you can start observing uh, you know maybe a small fly flying around you or a small frog which is right next to you, you cannot see it or a snake and things like that so patience is the key and uh, observing observing something which you have to you know do it more all the time and can find a lot of things mm-hmm. so when we go to the field we have few friends uh, friends of the field so when we go to the field we have to make sure that we have these friends along with us mm-hmm. this is the first one okay <laughs> so a water bottle so these things will make our life much easier uh, you know when we go to the field mm-hmm. so you might be wondering you know, there's a lot of water flowing right behind the water bottle what is a water bottle doing there <laughs> <laughs> right so not every time it is safe to drink from the you know flowing streams in the mm-hmm. ghats yeah few places where you don't have any uh, human habitation above you know the top direction of the stream it is good but not every time because if it is monsoon now this point of time it might be a little safe to drink but not in the place where the stream flows through the human habitation farms and fields a lot mm-hmm. of pesticides and human waste and everything would have got mixed with the water yeah but few places like kudremuk kudremuk you can drink water from any any of the stream because there is absolutely no human present presence yeah. above <coughs> when you start taking there is absolutely no humans there so it is so easy to drink the water from kudremuk peak but okay. here sharavati or any other streams where the water looks pure it looks uh-huh. very nice and clear but it is not advised to drink i have have drank couple of times maybe i was born in this place brought up in this place might not harm me much but for the people who may get i would not say no 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 don't drink them because it they might fall sick sometimes they might get sore throat and now in these tough times of covid and all those things even if you cough sometimes they look at you like this you know okay something is wrong. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah this is the first thing water bottle is something which is the most basic to carry mm-hmm. because you never know when you'll run out of water yeah because uh, the weather it keeps changing now and then and you no know, you might feel like drinking water more often and you have to keep yourself hydrated even if it is raining that is one yeah. thing i tell all my participants because they feel okay the weather is so cool it is raining why should i drink more water because you also lose water but you not know you have to drink water more yeah <coughs> excuse me and umbrellas these are my very good friends uh, in the field <laughs> apart from the people whom whom i take them along <laughs> umbrellas save you and save your equipment from water from rain because um, yesterday we went to the field uh, to shoot dancing frogs and it was sunny It was very mm-hmm. sunny. I was sweating mm-hmm. initially the first twenty minutes, and then mm-hmm. suddenly the weather changed so much that it started raining cats and dogs. It was yeah, okay. a matter of fifteen twenty minutes. If we don't have the umbrella, thinking it's so so sunny, we don't have to carry umbrella. It's okay. So <laughs> God had a, had a very tough time for sure. So <laughs> umbrellas will help you, and you know it will save your equipment. It will save you also, and mm-hmm. it's good. It's always good to carry an umbrella. Also, it can be a tool if you know. Mm-hmm. uh for example let's say if you are attacked by a wild boar suddenly <laughs> you can keep the umbrella in front of you to go back <laughs> oh, okay <laughs> <laughs> and yeah low angle shots uh a lot of uh, photographers you know a lot of us you know we use uh, tripods uh, with the center column yeah which cannot go this low <clears throat> so i would suggest uh, anybody who wants to shoot uh, more often in the western guards choose a tripod which doesn't come with a center column so okay. it will help you to go much much lower to the ground okay handheld is something which i used to always shoot before and now mm-hmm. after i have moved to videos and now there is no way i can shoot handheld sometimes mm-hmm. i do it uh, sometimes rarely i do it but i would depend on a tripod a study this is a, a leo photo tripod a carbon mm-hmm. fiber okay. a very good one which is a not a complete big tripod it's a mini tripod but extremely sturdy I shoot okay. all my videos with this. It goes extremely low angle, waterproof, yeah. doesn't affect you much. Yeah. So it helps you really handy. And you can see a dancing frog on the left side on the stone here. Yeah, oh, that's so small. And, <laughs> yeah, they're very very tiny. But you will be seeing these beauties full screen. Just imagine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then gumboots, gumboots. This is my best friend, next to the water bottle and the umbrella. Mm-hmm. because gumboots they'll help you to have to keep your feet dry mm-hmm. because they're waterproof and unless mm-hmm. the water enters from top your yeah. feet are, your feet is totally safe yeah. and these boots are also bite proof snake bite proof because uh, normally your pit vipers and everything they cannot bite through the hard rubber rubber what is shoes made up of mm-hmm. so you can avoid a lot of insect bites and even thorns 
and mm-hmm. you can actually walk very easily in a stream without getting your legs wet because the moment you start uh, you no know, to get your feet wet that is the worst kind of feeling what you get because you're just starting your day yeah. <clears throat> or maybe you've spent half a day in the field and then your feet get wet yeah and you slowly start feeling cold and you know it's not a very good feeling at all so keeping your foot dry is something which i totally advise a lot of people who wants to get into the western ghats and shoot in the streams and can walk care free in any mm-hmm. stream making yeah. sure that the water level is not above that shoe length yeah so this almost comes to your knee and it is totally safe to wear it and very comfortable this is uh, from decathlon okay. so people can actually buy it if uh, they are interested to... yeah at a chair because if that low if you have to shoot you cannot bend you will have your you no know, back broken properly mm. and especially we doing uh, filming if you want to film anything if you want to have a videos have some videos recorded and things like that even if you want to do photography mm-hmm. that low angle you cannot sit you no know, on the ground because first thing it will be wet second yeah. thing you never know what is crawling towards you third thing there are a yeah. lot of frogs around you and yeah. it is not an even surface to rest your no bum on because it will be like picking from you no know, down and all those things so it's easy yeah. to have a chair okay. again sit there comfortably tilt your screen and focus and take pictures yeah. this helps a lot and a gorilla pod this also is very handy this go this can go to any place anywhere and yeah. any low angle so basically these equipment small small things will help you to get the better angle for mm-hmm. what we're shooting because uh, it's always ideal to shoot a frog or anything from the low, uh, from the eye level eye level yeah. so if you are standing and taking a frog's picture it will look very bad so you have to go down to its level and then take pictures it will it will make a good difference so this uh, this tripod and this jobby uh, gorilla pod will help us to get to that level and mm-hmm. take pictures and yeah night time torch a torch okay. is extremely extremely important in the night time because uh-huh. how will you even walk without a torch in the forest where you've never been before or even if it's a place you've been visiting very very frequently mm-hmm. a lot of things change every day maybe in terms of in the monsoon the rains pour heavily and the water level goes high the water level goes down every day and a lot of animals are there a lot of wildlife is present in the place where you go and it is good to have a torch any point of time and a powerful torch is always always advised okay. make sure that it is long and durable because a torch with batteries is not suggested mm-hmm. a torch which is rechargeable is something which we can use and it will come to your rescue for a longer time okay. because batteries again it's again creating more of waste and more of you no know, non biodegradable yeah. substances right so charging is something which i would uh, suggest to a lot of any anybody who wants to buy a torch right and first aid kit so uh, many people ask me sir what will you do if uh, you know a snake bites you mm-hmm. the first answer i would do is first thing is don't get bitten but yes. you never know you're getting yeah. into the wild yeah. you have no control on the wildlife behavior yeah. and you you might have not even seen the snake but it would have seen you it might have got disturbed and bit you yeah what would you do so the first thing what i would do is probably the first aid what we have to basically do when a snake bites you mm-hmm. so i would not talk about the snake bite uh, first aid now but basically let us also make sure that we take a first aid kit whenever we go to the field Mm-hmm. this should contain a small uh, a cotton and a crepe bandage and uh, an antiseptic lotion antipe- antiseptic liquid ointment and some painkillers or maybe even some uh, dispirin and aspirin so some basic very basic uh, uh, you know medicine to you know make sure that if any allergies happen sometimes some in- insect bite might give you very instant you know, allergies Okay. you might some people it is actually high in the us even if a smallest insect bite can call you no know, can get them choke this they, they start yes. choking so for that we also keep allegra tablets you no know, not just for when we not just when we do the camps but also when we go to film and to shoot uh, any any kind of thing in the rainforest we also make sure that we keep this handy with us so okay. because you never know you never know what will happen so it's always mm-hmm. good to be safe than repent yeah so frogs so uh, this is something which uh, i wanted to you know tell I, i i love frogs a lot i love snakes i love frogs but i i don't love frogs just because we have a good purpose uh, we have a good reason to you know love frogs uh, misha do you know what will happen if frogs go extinct i mean any species if it goes extinct i know that it's going to create a major impact Yeah, it's a general answer, but tell me about frogs. <laughs> I think you are the master. <laughs> no, 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 no. This will happen. <laughs> so, 
frogs are the major uh, you know uh, consumer of insects and they control okay. the insect population really really well okay. so this is one this is one of the very uh, you know uh, smallest examples why we also have to you know respect everything and anything around us as mm-hmm. you just mentioned anything which goes extinct apart from humans it is a threat to the ecology yeah. and the world that's true. so this is something which will happen so just wanted to keep this uh, you know shared with uh, all, the, all the viewers what we have today and always we'll have to keep in mind a few things when we plan something uh, in terms of a trip or a shooting uh, expedition or a camp or anything if if people are coming with us we plan everything for them we'll okay. be there to plan it end to end making sure that the moment they get into the vehicle from bangalore mm-hmm. and until they get back to bangalore we plan everything that's great uh, and off late after this covid uh, pandemic we have stopped giving transportation we expect people to travel all by themselves to the location Okay. and go back but okay. once they come they are our responsibility okay. uh, uh touch wood and uh, god's grace nothing bad has happened nothing at all has happened so far in our camp so far it's been actually we are eco eco volunteers we've been trained by forest department and i am mm-hmm. a certified naturalist from forest department That's i right. also work with forest department in organizing a lot of their events in terms of educating the kids of rural areas mm-hmm. and uh, training the forest department staff on photography and wildlife and all those things so we know how these things can be planned well without making without you no know, uh, having any problem in between okay so planning is something which is extremely important if uh, okay forget we taking people if anybody wants to go all by themselves going alone mm-hmm. then this is very important because they should know where they are going they should know the nearest hospitals they should know nearest hotels hotels mm-hmm. might not be very important because but anything which you need a point of time if you don't have that that will be a problem okay. so everything you have to also you have to keep in mind and make sure that you have everything in your reach and mm-hmm. you know I mean, every, some people know where you have gone for example you get into a stream <clears throat> in a place where you never been before you should know where the stream heads to from where is it coming what kind of water is it uh, uh, is flowing in the stream what species you find there and all those so planning is very important okay and why are you going there what are you planning to shoot mm-hmm. <clears throat> so all these things will help you and to make your uh, a trip make your trip a better one with with good okay. results okay and knowing your subject so okay. uh, knowing your subject i mean i'm sure this is something which is very important because i feel that anybody who can take good photos of mm-hmm. any species will definitely know the behavior of the animal yeah because if you're able to shoot anything you'll know what will happen next or you yes. know how it behaves and you know when it will do it so if you have don't have this basic knowledge you mm-hmm. will just keep looking photos you'll waste your memory card and battery that's all nothing will happen next so <laughs> if you know the behavior you know when to click yeah so that is something which i would tell uh, everybody and naturalist on a guide so getting into the western ghats is definitely a task if you are not a person who was born and brought up there yeah uh, else you have to have a good naturalist or a guide mm-hmm. if you know about species then you should have a guide to know the place because sometimes some thick forest it is not very difficult to get lost and uh, here in sharavati you don't have any forest you can get lost but still it's good to you know have a guide where you know they can take you to some specific places they will know what is what is where so yeah. it's always advised to have a guide a local guide who will yeah. help you with a lot of other things also locally and mm-hmm. take you to the local place and show you the place and you can go take pictures a naturalist if you have no idea about species then a naturalist is a he comes as a, like a god and uh, he'll help you with all the information what you need which which animal you want to shoot which species of frog you want which species of snake you want where to go where to wait the natural will know naturalist will know it yeah and know your equipment <clears throat> so this is also very important mm-hmm. so uh, of course you cannot shoot you know a tiger walking towards you with a macro lens mm-hmm. and you cannot shoot a snake with a 600 mm uh, prime lens so yeah. you should know what you're shooting and you should know which equipment to use so sometimes 1855 does a lot of wonders and it can make magic with when it will help you to shoot butterflies insects snakes frogs and a lot of things so it depends on what you want to shoot and you should know your limits of equipment what can your lens do what mm-hmm. can your camera do what is your fps to what extent can you bump your iso so yeah. all these small small things will help you to achieve better images and this i don't have to say patience <laughs> is something which is which is the most basic basic key of basic thing of any person who is into photography yeah. may it be a wedding photographer or a wildlife photographer anybody yeah. with a camera should have this if not then i don't think it's the right place for it's, the person yeah. to be. 
right <clears throat> and respect for wildlife uh, wildlife uh, there are a lot of people who have come to wildlife uh, with passion they mm-hmm. they knew wildlife they they loved wildlife and then they picked up the camera yeah but it is other way around for a lot of people they've picked up the yeah. camera and then slowly started to start loving wildlife it it it, it, can, it can be any case they mm-hmm. love camera they love wildlife but respect to wildlife is something which is something which they deserve yeah you should respect wildlife if we getting into the forest we are going to their place yeah you respect them you cannot expect a snake to open its mouth 24 bar 7 no yeah. if it is not doing it it's not doing it come on it's okay no problem <laughs> you cannot expect you to see you no know, king cobra every time you go to agumbe no way yeah. so have that respect understand that they are also you know living their life and you know it is just that they are doing a kind of you know uh, uh asan to you or a kind of what do you call that a help to you by coming in front of you and doing some activities to capture it Mm-hmm. so respect them no if you don't know how to handle it do not touch it i mean i would suggest to not to touch any snake if you don't know anything mm-hmm. about handling about snakes let mm-hmm. the expert do it <clears throat> let the naturalist or the guide do it frogs do not touch frogs because some uh, because they are cold blooded animals and the body temperature what we have can mm-hmm. actually paralyze the frogs if we keep it for a long time oh, so okay. all these small small things also we try to impart to our participants every time when they come and we try to create that respect and slowly that will turn into the love and if you love something you will definitely conserve them yes. you don't have to tell that okay please do conservation we have less tigers we have less elephants no you have to get that love into people's heart and automatically they start conserve everything so yeah. that is something what we also try to do every time leave no trace there is something again you know uh, which is of high importance now because maybe long time back no not many people cared about it a lot of disturbance to the nature in terms of the you know footprint what we leave behind yeah. we carry a lot of food items maybe chocolate you know even uh, some people go to the streams and they go drink there throw the bottle there not photographers but some yeah. tourists they do that <clears throat> most of the photographers they know but again some small small things what you know we also even if the people people are doing it mm-hmm. it, it becomes our responsibility to tell them every time when we talk about how to behave in, in the forest yeah it's it's etiquette it is behavior when you join a corporate company they will teach you how to behave corporate yeah. etiquette yeah. i i i believe it is my responsibility to teach them wildlife ethics and wildlife etiquette yeah. so so that some small contribution from our side is you know going to uh, bring a small change in in the kind of in the way what people think about wildlife and i'm sure it will make a difference on the long run 100%. so do not throw anything some people say it's just a paper it will it's biodegradable it is a banana peel it is a biodegradable it's okay but banana doesn't grow in the forest it is an alien species alien thing to that particular forest yeah so don't do that or some people they peel orange they throw orange peel and say hey orange is okay it will degrade in 2 3 days but if you look at it from a very close point of view orange is not grown in the forest and animals might get confused what is it <laughs> so mm-hmm. there are a lot of animals moving around and it it might be disturbing for them so don't leave anything just whatever you take make sure you get everything back yeah and this one so this is how most of us see snakes and frogs and some small small animals in the forest so yeah. when we drive in the ghats i request uh, people who are into western ghats who want to visit western ghats want to take photos here be very careful because yeah. western ghats is teeming with life it is filled with life Yeah. So you may, you you might encounter a lot of snakes on the road, frogs, a lot of frogs. So be considerate and drive slowly. Drive very very cautiously. It might be raining. It might be not might not be raining, but still be very cautious to have a proper open eye towards the road and watch the road and drive. So yeah. these are the uh, photos I've taken on a single day, Nisha. Oh, oh my! <laughs> even, it's even more disturbing. So you can yeah. see the Malabar gliding frog with eggs. Say two hundred, three hundred eggs there. <clears throat> green wine snakes, green kale bag, squirrel. So one day is giving so much of deaths. Just imagine yeah. what will happen throughout one monsoon season. <laughs> so yes, it yeah. is unimaginable. Yeah. So a person with a proper uh, sense of driving can save at least some four or five snakes. That will make a difference. A smallest number will make a difference. So nobody even thinks about these. No one is counting them. We're counting only big animals. You know, we're not counting yeah. small ones. We have to start doing that. Yeah. So another a little disturbing image. This is the first ever time I saw this particular species of snake 
this is a large eyed bronze back and i had never thought that i'll see it in this condition it was you know it was very heartbreaking but this is the fact this is what is happening <clears throat> and yeah leaf so so for macro lovers uh, yeah. people who love to shoot macro you have a subject in everything you see in western guards all you have to do is just come to western guards with a <laughs> camera so yeah lander macax this is the scene i was i just explained this yeah. jack fruit and this this is the alpha male first mm-hmm. guy to come here so the, after this guy ate i stopped taking photos and i just observed 20 30 yeah. minutes jack fruit was over <laughs> <laughs> and they could even they dropped few uh, on the ground i was so tempted to pick it up but no no <laughs> yeah this is the uh, this is a nictibetracus petraeus mostly a, a castle rock night frog you can okay. see the eggs in front of it a little oh. out of focus mm-hmm. this is a male guarding the Eggs. Eggs. So I took this picture because the vocal sac on the right side has to be also on the left side. It should be a symmetry on both sides. But this frog had some deformation, so some yeah. there's some problem. So I had to record that this happens. Mm-hmm. It might be an effect of the fungus which grows on the frog. It might yeah. be the effect of the male combat which happens. This male would have got hit by another male. You never know. So something yeah. is not right. So I just took this picture. Okay. So this came again. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Another morph of Malabar pit viper. This was in uh, Kudremukh, an orange mm-hmm. color. This is surprisingly we found in the peak of summer, May. Wow. So, oh. <laughs> yeah. so uh, this king cobra had some problem in the right eye, uh, left eye. Mm-hmm. One of the eyes is not properly, uh, you know, it's not, it's not proper. I don't know. Something yeah. was wrong with the eye. I saw the eye later after I took the picture and I was processing it. Something is wrong. So this was not shot with the macro lens. This was shot with the 55-250 with the Canon, okay. the basic okay. uh, zoom lens. Mm-hmm. So this is the large-eyed bronze back. Okay. Beautiful uh, snake uh, from the guards. And there is something which you no know, I love doing. Just go sit there. Sometimes I go sit in the streams with my friends. My mm-hmm. my physical human friends, or also the friends which I explained. What about you? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it's it's a it's a it's a melancholy. It's a wonderful state of mind to be there. Just see there, you know. It's a, it's like uh, introspection also <laughs> happening at the same time. Sit there, watch it. You know, just watch clouds pass by and just enjoy the beauty of nature. Mm-hmm. So this is what I you know spend most of my time. with apart from being with my wife in bangalore when i come here this is my wife <laughs> <laughs> so i can be contacted on these platforms okay. my email id i would i will honestly reply to all the emails wherever i get wherever i get the moment i see it you will get a reply okay. so i can be contacted through uh, emails and facebook and instagram okay. so any questions related to uh, western ghats uh, anything about photography in western guards any species of western guards i would love to help anybody who mm-hmm. wants to uh, get information with if i don't know i'll be honest to say i don't know i'll get back to you on that if i whenever i find answer to that so that's great this is yeah. all about it and uh, thank you everyone for being so patient i think uh, i exceeded time by uh, 35 minutes 30 oh, no minutes way. no way i hope i didn't bore anyone and, no uh, absolutely if... <laughs> so ex- so informative so informative. thank you so much thank and uh, thanks to the whole post trail team uh, hamis uh, nisha and sneha uh, the new member <laughs> uh, for making this happen and having me on board it and uh, anybody who wants to visit western guards the the it's a free world please please join us i'll be more than happy to uh, have you here and guide you and uh, make sure that you will have a wonderful memorable western guard trip Thank thanks you. again isha thank you so much Thank now you. we can have questions if we have any yes we do have a lot of comments i'm just okay. going to go through them sure. then shiva kumar mentioned hello said a hello over here okay. uh, uh, then uh, luck and sharma hello sir okay. so glad to see you here after okay. a long Lakan. time i love you Pinky Suha, uh, Pinky again oh, said. Oh, she's my hi. sister. She's my oh, sister. Okay. Happy that they're also watching me, and especially me talking wildlife. Otherwise, <laughs> we hardly, uh, you know, uh, talk about wildlife. And happy that we have audience who are non-wildlifers. <laughs> yeah. Then Siddhartha said hi. Then uh, Raipa 
uh, mentioned okay. hello to herself. Oh, he is one of the forest department staff. I'm glad he's watching it. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> then Anaya, uh, hi Suhas, Anna, nice to see you. Okay, uh, my sister again. Okay. My family is here, huh? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then Siddhartha, I wish to see uh, Western Ghats wildlife photography. So that's, I think, most likely. Siddhartha, what you can do is contact um, uh, Suha so that he can get in touch with you and you guys can communicate and then, you know, go ahead. Uh, and again, give a big message. Uh, you, uh, Suha sir has been my life changer, a wonderful human being, mm -hmm. the most skillful person I have ever met. I have learned oh. everything I know from Suha sir. My guru, I wish you sir, a very long life. <laughs> oh my God. Thank you, Lakan. <laughs> and then Pinky again. Uh, let's see, there are a few wow messages from Anaya, from Pinky, then from Jansi. Uh, My wife. And, uh, Manu is <laughs> a power member. Uh, I think he's an acro specialist. And uh, okay. I, yeah, again, a beautiful comment from him. Uh, nice. Shiva Kumar, nice one. Anaya again, few um, smileys. Uh, Raya, <laughs> super photo, sir. And then uh, Sneha, I mean, uh, Hermes' wife, wow, lovely pictures. Uh, so, memories together. So, Has, um, okay. you have introduced me to this wonderful world of photography and Western Guts. Wishing you the best. Thank you. <laughs> and then, Thank you. <laughs> uh, then, again, a couple of messages from uh, Lakhan and Shiva and uh, Gopi Malapur. Uh, good to hear about western guts then anaya mm. why snake is why is snake this snake so weird from all other snakes i'm not sure which snake she is talking about who whose comment is that it's anaya, anaya okay, i can take it i can take it offline with her she's my sister <laughs> ah, okay okay <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, now i think uh, the next one is from gopi he is talking about the frog mouth um okay. uh, uh, is the owl how how this how old? Owl, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. That, how I, old owl or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, Gopi, this is not a, it's not an owl. It's no, a no, no. Sri Lankan frog mouth. So it's, it's a beautiful bird. Yeah, it is. It's the weird yeah. features and it makes it so special. <laughs> <laughs> Shiva Kumar again, superb. Hello, Suhas, how are you? Uh, from Aravind. Mm -hmm. uh, then there is. MCK, MCK, I don't know how to pronounce it. So the house fly on the hood <laughs> of the cobra goosebumps over before never seen. Now that's true. That is something which is so rare. I mean, seeing a cobra with its hood <laughs> open and being so close to it with the fly on top of it is like unbelievable. <laughs> um, then we have some uh, uh, Mendoza from Mexico. So I said a mm -hmm. hello. Uh, Mamta Suresh uh, Suhas, very informative. Uh, okay. Then Sankita uh, Sankita Music, I believe. Uh, Suhas, uh, mm -hmm. thumbs up. Okay. Uh, then Anand Prasad. Uh, hello, sir. Raptor Paradise Guest House, Tal Chapar, Rajasthan, India. Tal Chapar, Rajasthan. Mm -hmm. And Joba Bikana, Rajasthan. I think uh, he's giving some sports around, um, uh, you mm -hmm. know, for rap okay. Raptors. Mm -hmm. And uh, then, yeah, I think I missed a couple of. Then again, Deepak and uh, Sridhana, uh, it's a longer name, uh, Shiva Kumar, very <laughs> informative session. So, has Aravind, uh, about the last time we met. Um, at Badra during our volunteer training, I'm still due to Tatekad. Oh, okay. Less Aravind. Okay. Um, okay, Aravind, that's the span one. Wait for the spurting season. We can go to Tatekad. <laughs> uh, then, uh, then another um, Shania Sharma. Uh, amazing session. Suha, sir, okay. I have a doubt. What about the key compass? Key to com composing a picture as most of the guts are shades of green. Yeah, uh, this is by uh, yeah, Aaron de Souza. <clears throat> uh, yeah, Aaron de Souza. Aaron de Souza, yes. Yeah, it's a wonderful question, Aaron de Souza. Uh, yeah, so this is the one of the common doubts what everybody gets. As you said, 
Western Ghats is filled with a lot of shades of green. A lot of shades of green. So if you have a green wine snake, that green, you don't find it in either, any other uh, plant or any other tree or any other place where you have this green. Mm -hmm. So when you have the focus properly or if you know how to isolate your subject from the background, you, I'm sure you can you know, uh, get the green very well uh, shown in your images. Mm -hmm. Because I've made a couple of images which where you have the green wine snake, mm -hmm. the background is also green. Ah, okay. But both the greens are slightly different. Okay. And you have that uh, you know texture a little bit of which is you know, on the snake which is a little bit of different from the mm -hmm. texture of the background. Oh, okay. So some action happening here, or you know uh, the focus which is totally on the subject, mm -hmm. you isolate your background. That mm -hmm. that will help you to differentiate the different mm -hmm. shades of green in Western Ghats. But otherwise, a beautiful question because yeah, it is something which is a very common question which I get in most of the sessions when I you know talk and yeah. it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> That's true. Uh, then the next one is a message. It was a, it was an absorbing uh, session. Good to be a part of this. Uh, then I think I had a snake. Uh, she was talking uh, about wine snake. Okay. So what was the question? Why is this weird from all other snakes? Yeah. Okay, Ananya, this is not uh, weird. It is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't mention thank you. Okay, most welcome. Yeah, I think yeah, that was the comments about uh, so far what we have received. No much, not much questions. All, all beautiful because you explained it so well. So it was okay. Really, I really hope so. <laughs> <laughs> it was really it, oh, very cool. Thank you, Nisha. Thank, thank, so thank you so much. Much obliged. I'm thank really you so looking much. forward to you know see you in the wild at some point of time. Hopefully next year. Yeah. With this hopefully everything comes down with the pandemic and. Yeah. The traveling opens up. Yeah, we yeah. should be able to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Nisha. And uh, Thank thanks, everyone. Thank, Thank you, everyone, for joining in. And uh, have a good night. <laughs> thanks, dear. Thank you. Uh, so uh, that was Suhas and the wonderful session. And, you know, the moment we say it's going to be Suhas, we knew it's going to be a great tour on Western Gut, specifically focusing on uh, snakes and frogs and some lovely landscapes and the tips and the experience. So we, he really took us through the Western Guide. So that was that was an amazing one. And uh, let's see who is who all are lined up for our next um, couple of sessions. I know there are something on uh, birds and some on mammals. And uh, the next session most likely is going to be by me on leopards and uh, some experience with leopards and cubs so that's going to be our next session hopefully sometime in next couple of days time i think within 31st is going to be that i shall keep you posted on that um so let's catch up and till then please be please be very very careful it's a uh, covid season right now and uh, now the new variant delta beta theta i don't know how many variants are there as of now you guys, if you haven't got the vaccination, even the vaccine is not completely going to protect you. But to be on the safer side, please get your vaccine and please stay. Please keep yourself safe. Use your mask. Use your hand, sat hand sanitizers. Be safe because you know that way you are protecting yourself, your loved ones, and helping the rest of the world. On that note, I'm going to say bye. Take care. Stay safe. Let's catch up soon. Bye bye. <laughs>